Hello, I'm Emma Walton Hamilton, children's book author, editor, educator, and writing coach. And together with my mother, Julie Andrews, I have co-authored over 25 picture books and novels for children and young adults. I'm on the faculty for Stony Brook Southampton's MFA in Creative Writing and Literature, and I also serve as director of their Children's Literature Fellows Program. Because of the many hats I wear, I am often asked for advice by aspiring children's book authors. What do I do to become a better writer? How do I get published? I wrote a children's book. Now what? Well, in my view, here are the five most important things you must do if you're truly interested in writing for children and young adults. The essentials. Number one, read. Read the best of everything in your genre and stay current. People often make the mistake of thinking, well, I was a kid once, I know what I liked. But publishing has changed dramatically in the last 20 to 30 years. You have to know what the market is like today and stay plugged in, no matter what age group you write for. But I'll also take it a step further. Don't just read children's books. Read poetry. Read novels. Read essays. Short fiction. Plays. Screenplays. Read the newspaper. Only by immersing ourselves fully in the world of words and images and ideas can we truly hope to grow our own talent and our ability to contribute to that world. Anyone who aspires to write children's books would do well to immerse themselves in the history and the culture of the craft in order to understand how that discussion has evolved over the decades. That's the best way to figure out what you might add to the conversation. Number two, hone your craft. Take classes and workshops, attend conferences, read Publishers Weekly, The Horn Book, the SCBWI Bulletin. Keep stretching, learning, sharpening your skills, even, or maybe especially, after you've sold your first manuscript. Even if you live in a remote area, you can find wonderful home study courses. I offer a few myself in writing picture books or middle grade and YA novels. You can find out more about them at justwritechildrensbooks.com. Three. Find community. Writing can be a solitary business. I'm lucky. I write with a partner, and I work for a graduate writing program. But it's really important to find your tribe and connect with them regularly. Find a supportive critique group. Attend conferences. Join forums. Take classes. Whatever it takes to connect with other writers. It will keep you sane and honest. Of course, I'm partial to Stony Brook Southampton's Children's Literature Fellows Program and to my own online membership site, the Children's Book Hub, but there are countless other programs and groups out there worth getting involved with. Find the one that speaks to you. Four, diversify your strengths. It's the rare writer that makes a living these days solely from writing. Even the most successful writers in the world have to augment their income with things like teaching, editing, speaking engagements. Find ways to support your writing habit. Be willing to have a day job, do whatever it takes, but whenever possible, try to make those other sources of income writing-based, such as freelance writing, editing, or teaching. One of the best resources I know for finding freelance writing work is my friend Peter Bowerman, whose well-fed writer books, website, and newsletter has helped scores of writers support themselves by doing what they love to do, writing. And five, Focus on rewriting more than writing. Writing well is all about revision. I love the old adage about Michelangelo, who, when asked how he created the David, apparently replied, I just knew the David was inside the stone, and I chiseled away at the excess to reveal him. Well, I think of writing like that. In the beginning, you have to pour it all out onto the page, no censorship. But when it comes time to revise, you have to know how to do so and make that process just as important, if not more so, than getting the first draft out on paper. You have to chisel away at the excess and polish, polish, polish. If this is a challenge for you, you might take a look at my Editor in a Box revision kit, which includes a comprehensive six-step process for revising your manuscript and countless checklists, tools, and resources for making your writing the very best it can be. Once you've made your submission and you're waiting for your answer, write more. Continue revising or write something new, but keep flexing that muscle. That's the main difference between being a writer and being an author. It's a lifetime pursuit. Thanks for listening. You can find out more about my courses and resources for children's book authors at emmawaltonhamilton.com. To your success.